Armenian President Serge Sargsyan's statement made during a meeting on the so-called genocide of Armenians was not of any particular interest neither among the international community nor the political elite in Azerbaijan. Moreover, it came as no surprise for the residents of Armenia itself. Serge Sargsyan once again put forward false allegations against Azerbaijan, a country with 20 percent of territory under Armenian occupation and residents who have faced Yerevan's policy of ethnic cleansing for many years. The killing of small children living in the frontline zone is another part of the Armenian policy of genocide against Azerbaijanis. Several years ago, a tragedy involving a teenager from St. Petersburg occurred. 13-year-old Aygun Shahmaliyeva had arrived to visit her family members living in the Azerbaijani village of Ali Bayli, bordering on Armenia. But the summer vacation turned out tragic for the girl as she died in an explosion. It all started when she went out with her friends. When bathing near the Tovuschai River, Aygun and her friends came across an item that looked like an ordinary toy, but it later turned out that it was stuffed with explosives. My friends and I were bathing in the river. Aigun picked up a toy, and it was a doggy. I told her to throw it away, and at that very moment a baby that was with us started crying. So Aigun gave the toy to him, and he took it home. He played with it for about half an hour and gave it back to Aigun. She hit the table with it. In less than five minutes, the toy blew up. Thirteen-year-old Aigun died immediately, and her mother was injured. A boy who was playing nearby was not hurt. The tragic incident sparked an international row and heightened tensions between Azerbaijan and Armenia. Armenians who are well aware that children bathe in the Tovuz River in summer purposefully made an explosive device planted in a toy. Long before that, two other kids were killed in a 1994 incident. They had also taken home a toy which had a mine inside. All world countries are turning a blind eye to these incidents. Monitoring is conducted all the time on the front line but has yielded no result whatsoever. Armenians shoot at everyone they see, and when they don't, they stage incidents like the mentioned one with the toy. Needless to say, the Armenian killers were targeting the innocent, helpless children, because only kids could notice a toy and take it. On March 8, 2011, Armenian armed forces opened fire from the positions based near the occupied Shikhlar village of Azerbaijan's Ahdam region. As a result, nine-year-old Azerbaijani boy Fariz Badalov, who was playing outside his home, was shot on the head with a sniper bullet. He died on the way to a hospital. Amid repeated shootings at borderline Azerbaijani villages, Armenian President Serge Sargsyan continues telling fairy tales, saying that Azerbaijani soldiers are allegedly shooting at civilians in frontline areas, thus violating the ceasefire. Another lie by Sargsyan sounded in his speech at a meeting in the presidential residence during discussions on a plan of activities dedicated to the centennial of the so-called genocide. Astonishingly, such remarks are made by someone who was one of the executioners of almost a thousand civilians in the Azerbaijani town of Hojale in the early 1990s. The leader of the Armenian Republic remains unpunished after the brutal murders of women, children and the elderly. The Armenian president actually admitted this in an interview with journalist Thomas De Waal. Prior to Hojale, the Azerbaijanis thought Armenians could not raise a hand to civilian population. We managed to break that stereotype. Nonetheless, the Armenian president claims that only his country has suffered from the consequences of the Nagorno-Karabakh conflict. Sargsyan is forgetting the fact that it is Armenia that violated the norms and principles of international law and invaded 20 percent of Azerbaijan's territory. The path of murders, bloodshed, suffering and torture cannot lead to stability and security, the Armenian leader stated. However, despite these pompous words, 
Sarxian himself continues pursuing a policy of terror. It is enough to remember the 90s when scores of civilians were killed in the Baku subway as a result of a series of terror attacks staged by the Armenian Secret Service. The complicity and responsibility of the Armenian leadership for those crimes was proven by investigators. So on March 19, 1994, 14 people were killed and 49 others were injured as a result of the terror attack on the January 20 subway station. In a similar development, 13 people died and 42 were injured on July 3, 1994. What is the danger of an explosion in the subway? The threat is that the power of the enclosed space, the shockwave, strikes citizens there to the fullest, as they say, and certainly frightens parents and most importantly, the terror attack was perpetrated when students were heading to universities. This barbarity of the perpetrators, I would say, is incomprehensible. Even when you are in a state of war, you cannot take such actions against absolutely innocent people. In each case, for example, a device, an explosive, specifically assembled with a fuse, with a timer, was planted. So it is clear that it was the work of specialists, which can't be done by some terror group. According to the mechanism and the way it was perpetrated, there was the same trace everywhere, and that trace was linked to the activity of the Armenian secret service bodies. The situation on the Armenian-Azerbaijani front line remains tense. Despite the standing ceasefire signed in 1994, Armenia continues violating the ceasefire, which results in civilian casualties in borderline regions. Meantime, a hateful mindset of the new generation is being nurtured among the Armenian population by means of the propaganda of absolute lies. Since childhood, they are raised to believe that all Azerbaijanis and Turks must die and that the Armenians themselves are the only nation that has endured suffering. At the same time, they immediately remind others about a so-called century-long genocide. Obviously, when two countries are in a state of war, provocations become inevitable, but how can one deliberately orchestrate incidents, being aware that innocent children would be killed? Apparently, only the leadership of the Republic of Armenia knows the answer to this question.